Hello everyone, welcome to the special Sunday Family Arts. My name is Austin Kwasinski and today we're going to be doing these colorful birch tree paintings inspired by the work of contemporary artist Gary Kim. Now this is a really fun exercise guys to work with uh, different colors of paint, a lot of vibrant colors um, for that matter, and then we're also going to be doing a yarn resist technique. Uh, this will be really fun to incorporate and you might want to experiment it with other projects um, in the future. So there's going to be a lot of materials for this current project. So let me just break down what we're going to be needing for today. Uh, we're going to need uh, some scissors to cut up some of the yarn. We're going to need a lot of yarn strings here. Uh, we're going to be using cotton balls uh, to actually apply our paint as well as Q-tips for some of the finer details. I'm going to be using masking tape to tape down some of the yarn. Uh, we're going to need an assortment of different color paints. You guys can choose which ones that you guys would like, as well as clothespins and Sharpies. And then last but not least, I'm going to be using a five by seven uh, paper. Now it's important that we use a smaller size paper because if I look at the yarn that I'm going to be using, uh, this is the thickness of our trees. So if I start to lay it down on here, we want to make sure that it's going to actually look like trees. If we used say a bigger piece of canvas like this, they're going to look really, really skinny, and then maybe they're not going to look like tree trunks. So definitely we want to make sure that we're um, keeping our canvas size or our paper size um, down to a small size. I think 5x7 works perfectly great. Um, so yeah, this was actually paper that was 11 by uh, 14 and I cut it up into pieces. Uh, so 5x7. And you can also use um, canvas board or any kind of board like that. All right, so let's get started. So what we're gonna actually going to do before we apply any paint, I just want to show you uh, some of the works by Gary Kim that are going to be inspired for today's exercise. So these are some lands landscape paintings uh, done. And I just wanted you to notice, let's get out both of them here. I just wanted you to notice uh, the way that the paint is also being applied. So you can see in this one in particular, there's a lot of splotchiness that's kind of happening with the colors. and Another thing to keep in mind with the colors is that there's a lot of um, uh, warms versus cools. And this is really important for um, getting all spectrum of uh, the colors in our piece. And they're going to really kind of complement one another. I'm looking at this one in particular and I'm seeing the blues and the cools in the background. And then I see the leaves, um, the grass and the leaves really bright and popping in the foreground. There's a lot of warmth to it. Also um, in this scene is a lot of warmth of the direction of the light that's happening. It's a, a nice warm light that's kind of coming in and that's reflecting um, really great with the nice cool shadows. You can also see the cool reflections in the rocks as well. So that's something to keep in mind with our pieces. Um, again, uh, this blue and yellow, uh, the complementary colors are really working um, well with one another. So that's something to keep in mind when we're going to be doing our paintings. And as you can see, you can see the mix of warms and cools, the cools in the backgrounds and then the warms coming in here. And they really complement and go with each other nicely. So that's something that I just wanted to keep you guys um, an open mind about as well as and think if you can incorporate that into your pieces. All right, so let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I want to cut out a lot of um, pieces of yarn and I want to make sure that they're going to be the length of the canvas, but we're also going to kind of wrap them around. So give yourself a little bit of extra room to do so. So I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to cut a bunch of different pieces because these are going to be my tree trunks. So I'm going to make sure I have a lot of them. I have this multicolored yarn as well. So you can see this one might be a little bit too long. But cut as many trees as you would like. And again, we're going to kind of mix and match them. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to kind of carry this over. This one uh, might just be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab out my tape. See if I can get the end here. And I might want to move stuff around. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to tape the tops first or the bottoms, however you see fit. And then that way I know the direction it's starting, but I can either angle it this way or angle it this way. Totally up to me what I want to do, but I'm going to do a bunch of them like that. So let's just get out our different colors. I'm just going to kind of line them up like so. 
And another important thing that we can do is we can also space them out. So if we want a little bit of space in between them, we can have two really close and then we can maybe leave some room in here if we want to. And again, I'm going to tape these just with masking tape. If you're using uh, like a type of canvas board or something like that, you could totally tie them instead. You don't have to tape them. I just found this was a lot easier to remove once I was done or as well as uh, you could cut them as well too. So totally up to you guys. But I found this was a kind of a nice way to actually see what my painting looked like beforehand. And then I could actually kind of move things around. And as you can see, we have all these different types of trees and we can kind of move them and shape them the way we want to. I might put in one more as well. And maybe, maybe we'll put this one really close. All right. So as you can see here, I have a bunch kind of hanging around. And what I can do is just kind of uh, figure out where I want to kind of put them. So I, instead of just having it straight down, I might want to angle it a little bit, right? So I might have this one angle kind of closer to the corner a bit. And again, once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to tape it on the other side like so. Make sure it's not too tight. We want it to be a little bit looser than that. Just so just to make sure that our paint doesn't get underneath it. And again, what's really cool about this process is that we can overlap them, can kind of move them into place however we want to do it. Something like that. I might have these two kind of really close to one another. So let's put these close by. I'll move it up just so you guys can see it a little bit better than what it was before. There you go, something like that maybe. All right, let's see where we want to put this one here. We might have this one kind of cutting around like so. And we have two more that we can play with. Let's try right in the middle here. And it's good to have a variety of spaces in between one another. So as you can see, uh, the space in between these two and the top are really close to one another. And then um, as it goes down, it starts to gradually get in increased. So just try to mix and match them as best as you can. We'll have a more interesting uh, composition, I feel. All right. So with that out of the way, this is kind of our base of our project that we're going to work. So I'm going to just kind of move some stuff out of the way, just clean up some shop a little bit. I'll keep this here just so you guys can kind of see what I'm referencing. All right. And then to actually put my paints, I'm going to apply it onto this piece of paper here. That way it'll be easy clean up once I'm ready to go. And then I'm just going to put down bunch of pieces or a bunch of blobs of paint here so I'm just thinking what type of colors I would like uh, to use for this piece what type of colors might look go well together green definitely want to get some of those blues and again, I'm just using really basic colors, but if you wanted to, you could also mix your own colors too. You could use colors that, um, like a, for example, like a light blue or like a dark red or something like that. It doesn't have to be right out of the bottle. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab uh, one of my cotton balls and I'm actually going to uh, clip it like this. And I'm just gonna use this to dab my paint. So what I'm gonna do Kind of dab it like this and you can as you can see it kind of gets that little spongy mark to it and then i'm just going to dab 
my piece ever so slightly like this. As you can see, we're really kind of picking up paint here. And you don't have to just use base color. What I'm going to do um, pretty quickly after is I'm going to kind of transition to a different color. And again, I want to make sure that we're getting those kind of uh, leaves. So I'm going to transition to the yellow pretty quickly here. You can also mix it with the blue too. You could get this kind of like green color if you want. Yeah, as you can see right in the middle of our painting here, we're going to see a lot of green that's kind of happening there, which is kind of nice, actually. I like it a lot that the colors are starting to communicate with one another and mix and match. And as we transi transition, again, I got these a lot of brighter yellows here. And what's the cool thing about this is that we can do it in layers. Once this actually dries, we could go back over top of it with the blue and kind of mix and match and show different colors if we wanted to. I'm going to kind of mix and match the green and the yellow, I think. You could even mix it right on uh, this piece here if you want to. Uh, it's kind of a nice transition there as well. I kind of like the mixing of that color here. I'm going to mix some more yellow. And I also want some warmer tones, so I might mix some of that red. With that yellow. Okay, I'm mixing it more with the yellow. I think I might add a little bit more yellow, I think. I don't want that red to stand out as much as it's doing right now. So again, just kind of gauge how the piece is going, how it's flowing. If you want to kind of switch up the colors, feel free to do so. This is definitely a trial and error process. Uh, that's why um, having multiple sheets of the paper, like I said, I cut them into uh, four pieces. It's kind of good because we can actually try out and experiment different things. We can try different compositions with where our trees are kind of lining up. It's kind of totally up to us. As the artist, we get to make those decisions. Kind of going back in the yellow and I think I'm going to mix more green at the bottom as well. Something like that. Again, I'm just doing a nice transition between all the colors here. Again, when they're in close proximity, they're going to kind of communicate and mix with each other. All right, I think that's pretty much it for it. As you can see, it's really vibrant. It's really popping off that page, which is what you want. You really want um, that brightness to happen. And then so what we're going to do as that's quickly drying, we're just going to kind of remove this, this stuff. Acrylic is really great for this uh, type of work because it dries so quickly. Actually, before we do that, hold on. I'm jumping the gun here. What we're also going to do, I'm just going to move this over. That's OK. We'll, we'll move some over in general. We can also add some with Q-tips as well. So this is just to add little flourishes, little um, little flourishes, little smaller details to the actual piece. And you can totally do, you can totally remove it, um, this and then add the Q-tip part, but it's totally up to you. So what I might do is I might put little flourishes here in the grass I'm using this purple. I'm also looking at this piece here and I see that there's a lot of purples and kind of reds that are being kind of sprinkled in some areas in the grass so definitely kind of keep that keep that idea going again that can be just like little flowers that are happening in the bottom and then also we can use the other end and then we can kind of flip it around and if we wanted to add individual leaves or something like that we can totally do that 
Uh, something to keep in mind though, um, any of these light, lighter colors that are going over top, they might not show up as well. So that's just something to kind of keep keep in mind. When you're um, kind of going over a dark, dark area with light, you might need a couple, couple, uh, what's it called? A couple coats. I'll just splash it with a little bit of extra details here and there. Just add a little bit of variety to, to our piece. And again, we can add some blue, blue in the red spots just to mix those warms and cools. It's gonna really make a difference and really gonna pop out this piece. All right. So once you're satisfied and, and you like the results, uh, again, you can add as many as you want, any little flourishes of color. Uh, we're going to actually remove this stuff. And again, it should be done drying by now. So we're just going to remove all the ones from the bottom. And as you see, how easy this is to actually remove. And that's what I really like about using the tape technique. And then at the very bottom, I'm just going to remove one by one. Like so. We have one more left. My hands are getting sticky here. There you go. And now, as you can see, because we resisted, um, what's it called? With the yarn, we have these really long strokes of white, which is really great for kind of birch trees or any trees in general. Uh, again, birch trees are our white, so I think um, this works out really perfectly for this type uh, of painting here. And then birch trees, as you can see here, they have these little markings um, on them. Here, let's pull this a little bit closer so you guys can see. It has these little markings of black. So what we're going to do is actually go over top of this uh, using Sharpie. You could totally do it in paint if you wanted to, but it's just easier to make those little indentations with a Sharpie. And just be careful. There is some parts that are still drying. Uh, you can wait until it dries, but uh, just for the purpose of this demo, I am going to go over top of it right now. Again, I'm just going to kind of put these little marks in there. What's also great about putting these marks in is you're kind of indicating the shape of your form here. So if you actually start to curve it around, you're going to show the viewer that, ah, this is a curved shape or a cylinder that is turning in space. All right. So we're just going to do it for a bunch more. And again, We have these ones that are kind of overlapping, so we're going to make sure that we kind of separate them. Like so. And you don't necessarily have to add the same type of mark. You could add thicker marks if you wanted to really kind of separate it, or you could add really, really thin marks. You can definitely mix and match however you want to go about it. I'm just going to move this out of the way here. All right, a few more trees to go. And again, this one's kind of circ um, circulating right in front of it. I'm going to pretend that this one is kind of behind. It's good to have trees that are kind of layered on top of one another. I also really like that this yellow part kind of uh, snuck in there. It kind of shows like it's like a big cluster of leaves, which I actually really like how it looks. All right, we're almost there. We're just on the last tree. So I think when doing this, definitely play with the sizes of your shape. So we have small shapes here, and then we have also larger blobs, and as well as your color mixing as well. See how the colors are going to communicate with one another. 
Um, complementary colors uh, do this quite well, so that's why we looked at our reference of those blues and those yellows, those warms and cools tones, how they kind of speak and communicate with one another. All right, so there's our finished piece of our yarn resist birch paintings. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and again, uh, this is just the one version of this. We can do three other ones and we can mix and match. We can try different colors. We can try different compositions. What if we had um, a bunch of trees that were all clustered uh, together like that? Uh, it's totally up to you, but I hope you guys enjoyed this process and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.